Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige, this is Seeking Alexandria. And you guys, there's a foundation that has recently taken the internet by storm. Everyone was so excited about it. The Makeup Revolution Foundation, of course. We are gonna talk about it today. I picked up four colors. We're gonna swatch them, talk undertones. We're really gonna get into the thick of it. So let's start off with all the information. I did pick this up from Ulta, so that is what I am reading from. This is their Conceal and Define Full Coverage Foundation. It is $12, it comes in 24 shades. And in the description box, it says that uh, this is a lightweight yet buildable coverage that is offered in 24 skin true shades. It is a versatile foundation. It's designed to suit every skin type and tone with an oil-free yet creamy and comfortable formula that dries down to a long-lasting demi-matte finish. It won't settle into your fine lines or cling to dry patches. Housed in a luxe glass bottle with a jumbo doe foot applicator for greater control and less waste, this foundation offers highly pigmented coverage that can be layered or diffused to suit your look. Wipe on and blend out to ramp up the coverage for that real skin finish that diffuses blemishes and uneven skin tone. Or let your I don't know what all this is. Or let your complexion's natural character shine through using a small amount with a damp beauty sponge for a veil-like feel. Um, okay, it is vegan, cruelty-free, paraben-free, and oil-free. All right, and it is a demi-matte finish. Now that is what I'm curious about. So, I always look at a couple of things when I talk foundation. Number one, price. $12, not bad. Number two, 0.8 fluid ounces. So you do not get a full fluid ounce with this. The standard for foundation, as we all know, is one fluid ounce, or if you don't know, that's what it is. So this is only 80% of what a standard foundation is. However, we are going to look at the coverage, the wearability, and I feel like all of that can kind of weigh in on how much you end up getting. So we're going to, you know, dive into that a little bit more. As far as containers go, I actually really, really love these. It is a very nice standard, like, frosted glass, but heavy weighted component. This this feels very, very nice and nice, very nice and bougie. Um, let me grab, do I, I don't even know if I have another bottle that feels like my physician's formula feels kind of close um, and it's similar in like size, but honestly, this Makeup Revolution one feels so, so nice. So I'm super excited. Now, I know a lot of people have issues with the fact that this has a doe foot applicator. And here's my thing. Everybody made fun of, what was it? The Tarte Shape Tape Foundation because when they released that one, it had a big doe foot applicator and everyone was like, oh, I hate it. It's so dumb. Uh, la, 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 la. Physician's Formula, they released theirs. It also has a doe foot applicator on it and everybody was like, Oh, I wish it didn't have a doe foot. And then this one comes out, and I swear, I've heard like three people that are like, oh my god, how inventive, a doe foot applicator. And I'm like, hello? <laughs> Like, what, am I missing something? Like, all these other brands have done a doe foot applicator for their foundation, and everyone's always thought it was annoying. <laughs> and now, all of a sudden, it's, like, such a cool idea. I don't know. I thought that that was funny. But for me, I'm not obsessed with having a doe foot applicator on a foundation just for hygienic reasons, because I don't like that it touches your face. And then you put it back in, and it's just, I don't know. I don't know that I love it. Um, it doesn't bother me, necessarily, because, again, I'm the only one that uses my makeup, but it is kind of, like... Yeah, I don't know. So, anyways, let's go ahead. Let's zoom you in and let's um, let's swatch. Caffeine. It maintains my sunny personality. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a coffee addict. Mmm. Yes, bitch. I just spit everywhere. That was not good. Oh god, that coffee. Pretty sure there's setting powder in there. Oh my god. Oh my god, you guys, I have got to share this with you. If my eyes look a little bit red right now, I had an entire eye look on my eyes, and I was just, like, playing around with a palette, blah, 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 and the eye look turned out so bad that I had to, like, remove it. Like, there was no fixing it. So for the last half hour, 45 minutes, I've been sitting here, like, putting my makeup on, trying to make this work, and doing, like, all, and then I just had to remove it all in the end anyways, and I was actually devastated. So that's how my morning is going so far. How's yours? Um, let's talk about this situation here. So which color goes first. So I picked these up in the shades F.5, F1, F2, and F3, which are the first four. So these are the lightest four shades that they offer. Um, I really love the shade range of this collection. I'm really happy and impressed that they launched with 24 shades. And from everything that I've seen, again, I don't get like PR kits or anything like that. So I don't know I hate to say it, but I don't know what the shade range looks like in real life, if that makes sense. Um, but I do love the fact that everything that they've released, everything that I have seen, does speak very highly for a very nice and inclusive shade range, which is awesome. I feel like, for some reason, F2 and F3, these guys are very, very similar. And maybe F2 is oxidizing a smidge. 
F.5 is super, super pinky undertone. I'm thinking F1 is going to be like where I fall. So I'm going to grab the shade F1 right here. And I guess I'm just going to start by kind of dotting this on my face. And we're going to see how it builds and how it looks and everything. This is why I do not like doe foots right here. <laughs> like 17 days later, I have all the foundation on my face face. Now I'm going to do this one side at a time. I want to see how it looks with a beauty blender and I may or may not switch to a brush depending, but I do have just my damp Morphe sponge right here. And I did also go in with two different primers, one on each side. I'll give you that here in just a second. Um, but let's go ahead and balance this out with this damp Morphe sponge here and see how we look. Let's go ahead. I'm going to add a little bit more. You can see that after one layer, I'm getting an okay coverage. It's looking nice and smooth, which is kind of cool. I like that. I'm liking that effect so far. Wow. Okay. So here's my thing. This actually looks really nice on the skin. It looks really nice and smooth. Hold on. I feel like this might actually be one of those times where you can see a little bit better when I'm farther away. Like, obviously the color, okay, yada, yada, my, only half my face is done. But I feel like as far as, like, the smoothing effect, it looks really nice. It's almost having a blurring situation where it just looks really beautiful on all of my pores but this is more of a medium coverage foundation for me this isn't super duper full coverage so on this side of the face i will try it with a brush once i find it where the hell did it go so i'm going to dot it all over this side and then we're going to go in with the sigma f80 flat kabuki for this side and hopefully this goes a little bit better for the coverage aspect I don't know. I'm just super excited to be trying out a new foundation. Oh my God, you have no idea how excited I am. I love foundation reviews. Actually, you guys might know because you know how much I love foundation reviews. But like, I don't know. I love it that they're coming out. The foundation isn't just dropping garbage. They're dropping like really awesome, good releases, stuff that I can like really get behind. And when I found out that this was Demi Matte, I'm like, this is supposed to work for a bunch of different skin types and stuff. Oh, hell yes, girl. Sign me up. Wow, okay, so I'm not going to lie. That actually looks really pretty with a brush. The coverage builds up a lot better, obviously. Like, I think you can see in one coat on this side, it looks almost the same, if not the exact same, as it does over here. That is so crazy. Oh, wow. And it actually looks really smooth. And if you guys are not new to my channel, one of the biggest issues I have whenever I use a brush to apply my foundation is that it accentuates my texture 90% of the time. It'll always add more coverage or something like that, which is great, but it never looks smooth. And this actually looks really good. It's smart. Like, it looks really, really good to the point where... I would feel comfortable applying this with a brush. It's not as smooth as the Beauty Blender side, but it's pretty damn close. Wow. This is really pretty. Wow. And the coverage with the brush is so much better. Bring me back to life. Thank you. Wow. Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. 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 Do think I say it enough? So I'm going to add just a little bit more coverage on this side. I'm going to dabble it in here with the brush. And then from there... I'll probably smooth everything out one last time with the Beauty Blender, and I think that that's going to give us, like, our best finish. So while I blend this in, you guys, let's talk, because I am having one hell of a day so far, and I feel like whenever I talk to you guys about it, it just gets better. I don't know. It's just a thing. So I don't know what is going on with my cosmic situation today, but literally everything that I touch is going uh, to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> like, literally everything that I've touched today, I'm just like, well... Wow. That's great. Like down to down to I went to turn my camera on and I kept hitting the wrong button. Like I use this camera every day. I put up five videos a week. I know what button is on and I just kept hitting the wrong button and turning my camera off. And then I was like, oh my God, I hit the wrong button. You know, you do it one time. It's an accident. You do it 17 times and it's like, okay, listen, <laughs> listen, I'm getting pissed. Like what is going on? So that's, that's been my morning. And then what happened with the eye look? Oh my God, my eye look went to crap so bad, but that's the thing. It looked so good all along. And then all of the sudden it looked bad. And I was like, great. That's cool. Um, so that went well. And then what else was there? There was just like a hundred little things 
things this morning that have not only prolonged me getting ready, but they've just made the whole morning like so difficult. I'm not living. So anyways, this is the foundation. Now let's try some Concilla. Um, I think I want to try, uh, what do I want to use here? I'm thinking I want to do my Tarte Shape Tape. This is in the shade Fair. This is, I believe, their lightest shape tape. And let's see how it is for color. Okay, it's actually a little darker, whoops, than um, this foundation. But that's all right. We're just going to dot it around. So I did go in super light. You can see with the concealer because honestly, you guys, I don't need a ton of concealer for this. This foundation is actually doing a really nice job. And I'm just going to pat all of that in with my... Uh, what is this, my Morphe sponge, um, and see how everything looks together. You guys, I'm actually really shocked at how beautiful this looks on my skin. Like, I'm afraid to, like, Beetlejuice and jinx myself right now, but this looks absolutely fantastic. Okay, wow. Let's just, Paige, we need to, we need to gain some perspective. Wow. So I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of my Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder. This is in 05 Fair. It is by far my favorite drugstore powder, and I love my Cody Airspun as well. But, like, this is so good. It looks so good under my eyes. So I'm going to repat out those creasy bags, because, girl, you know I got some creasy-ass bags under my eyes. And they suck in product like a vortex, man. Oh, it is ridiculous. I always get so, I just laugh. I always laugh when I'm watching like a YouTuber or anybody that does makeup and they just like go right in with powder without re, re, uh, like re patting out their bags under their eyes. I'm like, are there really people that just don't have creases under there? Like, is that really a thing? Let's be, come on now. Like, don't lie to me. <laughs> you don't have, how do people not have creases and bags under their eyes? Like, what is your secret? How much sleep do you get? Cause like, I swear. I've slept my whole life, and I've always had greasy bags under there. Like, what is going on? Now, as far as the other areas of my face, they are almost completely dried down. If you have dry skin, I don't think you would have to set this foundation, which is crazy awesome, by the way. I'm, like, really impressed with how this is setting. It is a very nice demi matte. So now I'm going to take my airspun, and I'm just going to press this all over the rest of my face. And again, I am oily skinned, so I have to set my face. But like I said, if you are not oily skinned, or you have dry skin, or you just don't like to set your whole face, you probably would not have to with this foundation because it is a very nice demi matte foundation um yeah so it didn't it didn't feel super duper tacky but i throw on a light 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 layer i'm not i know it looks like i'm going in with a lot more powder than i really am but just so you guys know i'm really not going in with a lot i used to go in with a lot more powder and then i was like f that not happening but i always got to remember to get my double chin down here because if i don't get like this area this really unflattering situation right here the Dorito Spectre. If I don't get this area good and proper, oh girl, we are like a hot mess. The one day I forgot to set it. You know how I knew I forgot to set it? I went like this, like I was doing something and I went, I literally just brushed my hand. And when I went like this and looked at my hand, I had all my foundation on my hand and there was none. There was just a huge strip that was gone because I didn't set it. So it wasn't actually stuck to my face. It was just like lingering there. It was absolutely obnoxious and I laughed so hard I was like well can't tell you put your makeup on at freaking like 3 a.m. this morning now can you Paige good job so so far because I did go through all the different measures of like really setting it into the skin with different powders it does look a little bit dry but I think that once I go ahead and I set my face and I put all my other products on I think this is like this could look really really good it has it has potential I'm not giving it all the A pluses right now because I don't trust anything until the end of the day so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead finish up my face real quick I'm gonna cover myself in powder because apparently that's all I know how to do and I oh my god all over my shirt and I will be right back to show you guys the finished look and talk more about this foundation once it is all set down all proper like so I'll be right back okay you guys I went ahead I finished up the rest of my face and let's go ahead and talk about all the products I have going on right now and then we're gonna jump into this foundation a little bit so let's talk first about face products I am wearing my Park F princess palette and today I really did want to create like a perfect bronzer you guys know I've been working with a lot of new products lately a ton of new releases and I was gonna use that Smashbox palette from the Smashbox video I can link that right up here but I did a full review of their holidays collection and I wanted to work more with that contour palette 
palette. And then I was like, oh no, like I need to like make sure that this look is perfect because everything was going so well. So I went in with my trusty princess cut from my Park F Princess palette. A little bit of reshaping right here, but mainly this guy. And it was, it's just, it's, it is my bronzer. It is my life, my dream, my world. I'm obsessed. Then for blush, I went in with this Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush Palette that I can barely read the back of. You ever notice like Hourglass stuff, the back of their palette is so reflection, ref, reflectioned. It's so like shiny and reflective that when I read it, I'm like, oh God, it's almost like I need seizure meds for this. But anyways, I grabbed this guy right here and I just ran my brush through all three, threw it on. I love this blush palette. Now I did get this from the Nordstrom Anniversary Sale. I haven't been able to find this to link it, but if you go with any Hourglass blush, it is fantastic. I love Hourglass, like their face products, their powders, stuff like this. Absolutely love it. So even if you can't get this exact, you can get any of their blushes and you'll fall in love. So I use that. And then for highlight, I did want to try something a little different. I have used this before. I used it in a full face of drugstore first impressions, which I can link right up here. But this is the Makeup Revolution um, kit. I don't know what it's called, which kit it is. But this is their highlight kit. It's got these four guys right here. I mixed these two, went in on my upper cheeks, and I screwed up. And at first, I took that uh, brush and I was a little too heavy into this white shade right here. Oh, girl, I had literally a strip of white and I was like, shit, 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 shit. Me for like 12 minutes just like blending out that that shade and then I mixed it with the golden shade and everything worked out really really nicely so that ended up working out pretty well um, and again I will be working on an updates video for you guys for that you know that type of product everything in that video but just so you know I did use it today and it kind of turned out fabulous there are the problem with that palette for me and just as spoiler alert they are a little bit more glittery than I would like they, they have just like a little bit too much chunk if they were smooth or more finely milled I would be like so so on board, but just that chunk, it's just kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm still working with it. I'm still in the process of deciding what I think, but for now, that is what's on my face. On my lips, I have the Urban Decay uh, Cream Lipstick. This is in the shade Fuel. Now, this, they actually released, uh, what was it, a year ago or so, when they did their Naked Heat palette. That is what this is from. I use this lipstick so much. Like, it is, it is so busted. I have, oh god, I kept this with me in my purse for probably six months after I bought it because I was obsessed with this color. This was, this color was literally my whole face palette forever. Like this right here, what you're seeing about a year ago, this is what I looked like all the time. There was always some intense, like warm tone brown in my crease, a yellow glitter on my eye and this lip. Like it was my go-to if I wasn't filming, this was in my purse, this was my life. And I really, really like this. This is a great, great color. So that is what is on my lips. Now, as far as primers, and I told you guys that I would delve into this a little bit more. Um, I do have two different primers on my face. On this half of the face, I do have my Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer uh, over here. And again, I'll tell you what I chose or why I chose these in a second, but the Maybelline Baby Skin Instant Pore Eraser is on this side. And if you're new to my foundation reviews, I like to pick primers that are different, but that I think would still complement the foundation, you know, in, in more of a uh, juxtapose kind of way. So for example, this one is a pore eraser. It's not going to have any to do with the mattification. It's not going to help with uh, any type of hydration to the skin. This is just to see if this foundation will look any smoother on top of a pore erasing type foundation or type of primer. And then on this side, I do, like I said, have the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer, and I picked this one because it has hyaluronic acid in it. And hyaluronic acid does a great job at really delivering and pulling um, moisture into your skin throughout the day so that you don't look overly matte. You don't look overly dry. You don't look overly anything. It's just meant to help keep your skin looking a little bit more subtle and a little bit more radiant. And I thought it would be cool to put this one with this foundation because again, it has that demi matte finish. What if it goes more matte? How is it going to play throughout the day? And I wanted to see if more of a hydrating type primer for those of you out there that have oily skin, or not oily skin, for those of you that have drier skin or combo skin, if you would be looking for something with a hyaluronic acid, you want to see how it works with this foundation. I thought we could kind of give both sides a go, see what we think. And by the way, both of those primers I do obviously love, or I would not be using them. Uh, but the Smashbox Primerizer I have used, that's like my second or third bottle. I think it is a fantastic primer. So let's go ahead real quick and now we're going to talk about some foundation. So I am actually really, really impressed so far. What I'm loving, number one, the even skin tone that I have, I'm loving that. In the description of this foundation, it said that it was focusing on real life skin tones and like what people's skin looked like in real life. And I have probably never seen a foundation that does that just as well as this does. This is giving me such real looking skin, but the porcelain version, like if you had to imagine what a natural 
natural skin tone and undertone is. This is the almost the perfect like shade match for me. Everything looks absolutely fantastic. It went on really great. I love the way that it built up. Um, and it didn't build up into like a really thick cakey situation. It feels like it did a great job of really pressing it, the pigments in this foundation into my skin. And when I look for a foundation that doesn't go um, straight, really high coverage. So for example, if I'm talking about the Dior Forever Undercover or my Catrice HD Full Coverage, both of these deliver immediate coverage very, very quickly to your skin. So you put them on and it's like, boof, it's literally like you just put on a veil of plastic, a totally different color, and it just, it takes away all discoloration and any and all everything. And these are great for full, full coverage. Now, the difference between this, those, and something like this, this is a medium coverage, but but when you build it up onto your skin, it goes into your skin and evens out the pigmentation of your skin instead of covering it up. Whereas, again, those cover it up. This, I feel like it just goes in there and evens that tone out, which is absolutely something that I look for and something that I love. So, so far, I love the way that this looks. Nothing looks overly accentuated. Nothing looks overly, like, emphasized. I do think that the texture on my cheek region up in here and here does look a little emphasized, but I think that that is the highlight and not so much the foundation, because right through here on both sides, everything looks really good. I wouldn't say that one side necessarily, uh, excuse me, <laughs> you Mr. Lipstick, I wouldn't say that one side looks better than the other. I think they both look very good and even and fresh. It's not accentuating, but it's also not taking away a lot of my natural face terrain, if you will. So I think it's doing a good job at maintaining what skin naturally looks like, just a lot more even and a lot more covered. I don't know. There is something special about this foundation. I'm really excited to wear it and see how it goes. So I'm going to go do my day. I will check in with you guys at the end of the day, and we will see how this bad boy wore. We will get a close-up. We will do all of that. But I'm actually going to give you a semi-close-up of what it looks like right now just because I feel like it would be a great thing to see. And you can see what I'm talking about a little bit, like up through, let me grab a brush. Up through this region, you can see on both sides, it is looking a little bit textured. But again, I think it's the highlight. It's that Makeup Revolution highlight. Whereas like down here, it just looks really good and smooth throughout here. Everything blended so beautifully on top of it. Like even the Hulk isn't that pissed off, which is crazy. I had a big red pissed off situation right here. He's covering very nicely, which is good. Um, and just overall, like everything looks great as far as the color matter. It's looking really really nice like you guys. I'm loving this. It looks it looks really nice Okay, so now bippity boppity boo. Let's go to the end of the day Boop. Okay, beautiful people. It is the end of the day This foundation has been on my face for just over nine hours And I have a couple of notes that I think would make this a much better process So let's talk first of all. I'm gonna get it right out of the way just as an overview I actually really like this foundation. I think that it wore very well. There are a couple things I would change number one I would not set this foundation with the Cody airspun or anything like this that is very robust as a powder um, I think that this is the type of foundation given that it is already a demi matte finish you will want to set it a little bit on the lighter side you'll want to go in with maybe a more finely milled powder taking something like the Maybelline fit me all over if you have to set your whole face like I do this would be a good option um, a because this is just very very finely milled you're able to go in with a lot less of it at a time or something along the lines of the Mac studio fix you could go in with a little less liquid foundation and then set it with the Mac studio fix and it might help to counteract that kind of dusty look that you get um, because um, that was really the only issue that I had with this, and it was out in natural light. Um, it was just more of like a, I don't know how to describe it, but it looked like I had kind of like chalk dust on my face. And I know that a lot of people have had that issue with the Cody Airspun. I have never had that problem with Cody Airspun before, so I think it's just an issue where they're not jiving so well. So taking that kind of out of my consideration, because obviously I'm not going to let like that one thing end my whole review and be like, oh god, it's tragic. Because honestly, aside from that, which did go away and kind of dissipate throughout the day. I really felt like this foundation wore so nicely. Um, again, it is, like I said, demi matte, so I didn't have too much of an issue with oil. In the last probably like three hours, so somewhere in that six hour range, I noticed all the oils on my nose did start to come through, but I still have not blotted at all today, and I think that oh, like my entire 
T-zone. Yeah, I'm not oily anywhere, but literally right here, which is huge for me. Normally, by the end of the day, especially at this nine-hour mark, girl, we have oil just like pooling on our face like a pizza, and it is not a pretty picture. So for it to look this good still after this long is really nice. Now, as far as creasing, I do have a little bit of an issue with that in their description because they said that this is supposed to be a crease proof and blah, 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 blah. No. I see a lot of this settling into my lines right here on both sides. Um, um, and as far as like the primers go, I didn't really notice that one side was like super great over the other. If I had to pick one, I would say that the uh, Maybelline Baby Skin, or yeah, Baby Skin, that this one edged it out just a little bit in more of like the porous areas. But the primerizer side, I really liked because it did a great job at helping to deliver a little bit of almost more um, dewy or lit from within on this side, which I think you can actually kind of tell a little bit. I'm not sure if it would pick up in here, but I just feel like throughout the day this side wore almost a little more hydrated than this side but this side had a little bit of more of a smooth effect so it was really interesting um if i were to wear this again I think I would use maybe my Tatcha Silk Canvas to fill in the pores or even this baby pore skin stuff from Maybelline all over, but just in the porous areas, but obviously on both sides. And then um, I would probably go in with that Becca Glow Essence because I feel like this foundation does need something to pull, like a little bit of lit from within, a little bit of just like glow from your actual skin to pull that through. And I think if you can combine that glowiness with the fact that this does look like very natural skin, I honestly think it would make a great foundation. Just a couple of little tweaks here and there that I would make. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump up close real quick. The only areas that I actually, I should probably, should probably zoom in before I just keep talking. You guys, it's been a day. The only area that I really had a lot of creasing going on is right in here on both sides. But like for the most part, you can see I'm having some slight texture, but there's little to no breakage up around here. The, everything stayed completely in place like the foundation looks exactly like it did this morning. My Hulk didn't do anything. This big red guy, I thought for sure he would come undone. He's still covered, still looking pretty good for nine hours. Again, you can see the oil right here. And I did have a little bit of stuff slough off right here because your girl had to dot her nose because I had a little bit of a situation. I thought I was going to sneeze. It was a whole moment. But other than that, I mean, everything else stayed really nicely. Like, I'm, I'm really impressed with how well it just stayed put. So I don't know if I'm the only one, but I really, really like this foundation. I will definitely be trying it again because, honestly, it stayed so well. Now, again, if you are like me and you are oily, definitely be mindful what you set this with because the setting, I think, on this one is going to be key. I always tell you guys at the end of a foundation review how I would make it better, how I would change it. And, honestly, that is probably my biggest, biggest tip for this foundation, which, to be fair, I don't think I've ever had a foundation where I was like, yes, the problem is what you set it with which speaks very highly because as far as the formula of this the coloring all of that it was really good i think it did oxidize a tiny 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 bit because i did notice a light noticed okay i did notice a light shadow down here after it was all said and done that wasn't there before but even with that i just feel like this foundation the formula the way that it sits everything about it was so nice and natural in the way that it looks on the skin but yeah honestly you guys at the end of it i don't have a lot negative to say about about this it didn't break apart it didn't get patchy the only real thing I can say other than the air spun is that I do notice my texture being a little bit more emphasized so if I was going to mix this with something it would be probably something in the Dior family because for me those are very very smoothing whether it's the Dior forever undercover or the regular Dior wherever the hell that one's at hello that is this one right here the Dior forever just their standard Dior forever oh yeah because this one is forever undercover this is regular forever it doesn't matter for me the Dior's are very very, very smoothing. They look so great on my skin. I love these so much. And again, for smoothing anything like that, these are great. So if I was to mix it, I would probably go with something in this family just, just for that smoothing effect. But overall, I'm probably going to try and work with a primer and a different powder before I mix with like changing the actual like breakdown of the foundation because I think overall it does give you almost everything it says it will. Again, I did crease and all that, but the natural look you get from this, the component, everything, I think this is definitely worth giving it a try for 12 bucks. You can get it at Ulta and I am just 
I'm I'm a fan. I really like it. You guys can tell me what you think down in the comments. Um, I really want to hear from you guys, especially on this one, because it hasn't been a lot lately that we have been seeing really good, awesome, like high quality foundations drop. And I really like this. I'm super impressed. And as an oily person, I will definitely be trying it again. So leave me all of your thoughts down below. I want to hear them. And um, while, oh, you know what? While you're down there, you should probably just like crawl on up the chain into the description box, you guys. Definitely go check that out because that is where my Instagram and my Twitter are at. I have a couple socials, but those are the two that you will mainly, mainly see me on and get to interact with me. Definitely the best way to get a hold of me or to see me or to see what's coming before it actually makes it to the channel. And while you're there, also do not forget to subscribe if you have not already. I put up new videos Monday through Friday. That is five videos a week. There's always lifestyle stuff or hanging out with me, vlogs, hauls was this week's. Like it's always, it's just always something kind of fun. And then we have like three to four days of makeup fun. It's a good lit time over here. So definitely check it out. Let me know what you guys think down below. Any content that you are curious about, collections, all that good stuff. Always leave that down below as well. And that is it, you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! That I love foundation reviews. It's like, oh my god, the AC's on. Damn it! I'm oily, and girl, I am oily. Oh my god, Becky, look at her texture. It is so big. She looks like one of those freckle face girlfriends. <laughs> What was I? Where was I going with that? <laughs> oh, I snorted. Oh my god. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab the shade F. Okay, excuse me. Stop. <laughs> my fucking ass is rolling away from me. It's. I'm not a fan. Uh oh. Somebody forgot to wipe off the foundation swatches from her arm. That was good. Okay. Pretty sure I'm wearing them somewhere on my body. That's great. Loving this. Oh my god. Look at that crease, girl. A family of five could fit in there. What the hell? <laughs> Hello, Paige. What are you doing with your life? Like, hello, I'm wearing chapstick. Okay, uh, that's not going to complete a look, ma'am. The only issue is that I really had a ton of issue. <laughs> At the end of it, though, you guys, those are my thoughts. Like, I don't have that much awful stuff to say. That much awful stuff. What? Versus the primerizer, which this one is a primer and a moisturizer in one. It has a hydraulic... <laughs> hydraulic. <laughs> hydraulic acid. That's in a cylinder page.